Hello everybody and welcome back. Today another step in the build of my homemade mini lathe. This time is about the definitive installation and alignment of the headstock. The headstock is one of the most important parts of the lathe for obvious reasons. It keeps the spindle with the chuck that in turn keeps the workpiece in place and in rotation and around its, its axis of rotation the whole process of turning turns around. <laughs> it seems a joke but indeed this axis of rotation puts in relation the workpiece with the stationary ward that lays on the bed. The perfect alignment of this axis with the bed is therefore of paramount importance and this is the whole point of this video making the headstock and thus the spindle aligned as best as possible uh, to the slideways of the bed. Because this task is quite critical, I'm gonna think to do more than one complete simulation of the whole process of installation and alignment uh, to find out any critical point and gain some useful insights. Indeed, it was really helpful, as you will see along the video. To do this alignment, uh, I'm gonna use this towards the center-left ground bar that is fairly precise. The bar is inserted in the chuck so that it protrudes uh, both towards to the front and to the back of the chuck in a way that it stays in equilibrium and allows the chuck to have a good grip. Because the bar weighs 5.5 kilograms, a possible source of problems could be the flexion caused by its own weight as you can see here in this demonstration. So let's see how important this deflection is. Theoretically, a 30 mm solid bar that overhangs for 500 mm should flex 0.05 mm, which to me, and accordingly to this book, is unacceptable. Talking about this book, the author uses a 25 mm hollow bar long 315 mm. I don't have a hollow bar, so I need to accommodate what I have to get the very same required accuracy. Using a shorter bar, let's say 300 mm, could have been a solution because it would deflect 0.006 mm only, but I feel better checking for a good portion of the ways travel and 300 mm is not enough. You know, this deflection could be a source of uncertainty, so I thought to check the magnitude of this curvature. And here I got a surprise. Uh, the curvature was almost nothing. Well, at least uh, it seems to be the case after a temporary alignment, but that's clearly not possible and against the laws of physics. So I wondered what's going on. Well, you have to know that because tolerances, the bar comes slightly bowed from the manufacturer and this curvature is not the same caused by deflection. So when held by the chuck, the bar is rotated in a way that this curvature of just 0.03 mm over 1000 mm falls at 90 degree in respect to the plane of measurement, with the idea that in this way the curvature should not influence the measurement. For example, if I measure over the vertical plane, the curvature is rotated on the horizontal plane and vice versa. But there's a trick. I'm pretty sure everybody would do the same. I use a die indicator with a spherical tip on the plunge shaft uh, or spindle, but I prefer to call it plunge shaft. Now, running along the strike line over a banded cylinder would cause the spherical tip to go a little bit down in the middle where the bar uh, is banded and to rise again at the extremities, like this. If the height of the extremities are made equal in respect to the bed, the further curvature caused by deflection would bow the bar toward the top. But since the band is oriented on the horizontal plane, the two somewhat compensate from the perspective of the tip of the die indicator. And when it is moved in the middle of the bar where the band is located, uh, it will go down. But because um, there is also the curvature caused by deflection, uh, it will rise at the same time and the combined action notified the deviation. <laughs> mm. That was not easy to detect and it seems nobody talked about this possibility. 
Well, for sure, I didn't find it mentioned in this book. And I was able to find it because I was convinced that the bar needed some kind of balancer with counterweights. So to arrange a counterweight, uh, I'm gonna use a couple of stands with this makeshift thing on top that works in a crane to hang a similar bar having the same weight of the test bar. Uh, I noticed an excess in deviation and realized that because the bar in the middle is kept by the chuck, only half the weight is necessary, so I arranged to hang a couple of bottles filled with uh, water to reach the exact half weight for each half chunk of protruding bar. With these counterweights, the second simulation gives good results, reducing the sag to 0.003 mm and reducing the combined effect of the curvature due to manufacturing and the curvature caused by deflection. However, let's say that the definitive solution would be to use a dial indicator fitted with a flat tip that stays on top of the cylinder regardless of the horizontal curvature, if any. Unfortunately, this is a thing that I don't have at the moment. So let's move on to the next step, the actual installation and alignment of the headstock. To compensate slight irregularities of the bottom plate of the headstock block and the bed, here I'm going to prepare some leveling paste. This is a recipe I've developed and that seems to give good results for this kind of application. Basically it's made of grey cement and two components long setting time epoxy resin. The purpose of adding cement is to reduce the fluidity of the resin without compromising the compressive strength too much. I have no exact data though. The paste can be made fluid or quite dense as in this case. It is smeared on the bed rails avoiding the tapped holes. Looks like play doh. Yeah. Right. Then the headstock is positioned on top. Mm. Okay. And screws tightened. Why is so hard? Before going through to fully tighten the screws, the test bar is clamped on the chuck. Also, the die indicator is positioned onto the temporary carriage. Here I am looking for the maximum deviation that indicates uh, the top of the cylinder thus the axis that crosses the center of its circumference. And now uh, counterweights uh, are hung uh, at the extremities. And the same operation is performed to find out this axis that crosses the center of the circumference on the vertical plane. Well, this is the center. And here we are. Oh, center. So this is completely off center. Despite the simulation, so there's always something that goes wrong. Mm. This is a problem. 
Bergman. Eventually, it was a screw, badly inserted. The temporary adjustment screw on the front side of the headstock is then replaced with this mechanism made of two plates expanded through three large group screws. This mechanism counteracts the other screws that work in compression, making the headstock adjustable over the vertical plane. For the horizontal plane, both the compressing screws and these lateral screws are used to adjust the angle. This way the headstock can be easily adjusted with precision to the final position before the resin sets. It will take 48 hours. After the resin has hardened, only small adjustments can be made. Before beginning the adjustment, a precision level is placed on the provisional carriage to make sure the full travel is at the same level and the bed has no twist. Here you see I'm checking the deviation due to the manufacturing bow of the bar choosing the mid-range position. The adjustment is made using a dial indicator that is first positioned over the horizontal plane, making sure to have the bar rotated so that its bow is at 90 degrees. Then the dial indicator is moved and the bar rotated by 90 degrees to adjust over the vertical plane. These steps are repeated several times before achieving the optimal alignment. It took me more than one hour to complete the job. Okay. The final result is an error of maximum about plus minus 0 0.005 mm over the full 500 mm length. A further check is to place a precision machinist square to clamp this flat ruler at exactly 90 degrees in respect to the slide ways and the use of this tool to hold the dial indicator on the chuck to rotate it around uh, to check on both sides for the same distance. And I have to say I'm pretty happy with the result confirming the correct alignment of the headstock even though the real verdict will be given when an actual cut will be made. A final note, a chuck and particularly a three jaws self-centering chuck has some intrinsic errors. This particular chuck has 0.06 mm average eccentricity error on the jaws. This error does not influence the alignment though, provided that is taken into account. Next step will be about making the cross slide, so stay tuned for the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video, if so please consider to like and share. Like in a video is kind of applause for who created it, which in this case is me. And uh, sharing helps the growth of the channel, so thanks to all you. As always, uh, comments are welcome, and because my videos are easily buried under the pile of uploads made every day from all over the world, if you are interested, consider to subscribe and click the bell icon so YouTube will tell you when a new video is available. For now, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye! Mm -hmm.